Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and uh, today we're going to start tackling an issue, a social issue, that being homelessness. And this will be part of a two-part video series where, with my students, we've been working on the application of models to understand this crisis. So homelessness in California is particularly um, heightened uh, compared to the rest of the United States. It says here, California has 22% of the nation's homeless in a state whose residents make up only 12% of the country's total population. Uh, the California State Auditor found that in April 2018, homelessness in California, that the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development noted that California had about 134,000 homeless individuals, which represented about 24% of the total homeless population in the entire country, in all of the US. So California has one quarter of the homeless population within their state. Why is that? Why is California experiencing such large amounts of homelessness? This in part is due to a housing shortage. Housing shortage where the quantity of demand is greater than the quantity supplied of affordable housing. And what has generated that housing shortage? That's what we're going to begin to tackle in this video and in the next video. Again, it says here, 2017, homeless persons in California numbered 135,000, which was a 15% increase from 2015. So it just highlights that this problem is not being resolved. It's just getting worse over time. Um, and in 2021, it's estimated by, again, the United States Department of Housing that the number has gone to 161,000, from 135 to 161,000. Again, that 15% increase. Is the rise in homelessness in California a result of mental illness, drug addiction, or poverty? Again, no, it's due to this housing shortage. And again, we will see in our next video how you have people working full time maintaining a full-time job in the state of California and still not earning enough income or wage per month to afford rent within the state. So let's take a look. What are some of the factors that's leading to this? There's a variety of factors, but we're going to focus on this factor here, that being Airbnb, Air Bed and Breakfast, as it was formerly called. It's based in San Francisco, California. It's an online marketplace focused on short-term homestays, where a property owner can allocate their property. Maybe they have an extra apartment or an extra house, and they can put it on this online marketplace and offer it as a temporary stay that so that it becomes a cheaper substitute to hotels. In this article here, it looks at hotels versus Airbnbs, and it notes that, generally speaking, Airbnb are cheaper than hotels. So Airbnbs are a cheaper alternative, a cheaper substitute to hotels. Okay, so let's look at the state of California. On this website, it highlights that in California, the average price for an Airbnb in 2021 was about $258 a night. In 2020, it was $211 a night. So $258 a night in the state of California as an average price for Airbnb. In this website, we can see that hotels, this is looking at hotel average costs, um, a hotel in San Francisco is $269. So that is more expensive than the Airbnb price of $258, slightly more expensive. Then if we look at West Hollywood, it's touching $400. So $400 being greater than the average price on Airbnb. And in Napa Valley, $500 a night in a hotel uh, which is more expensive than an Airbnb rental. So let's just assume for this model that hotels in California are more expensive than Airbnb. So let's first apply a non-price determinant of demand, that being substitutes. All right, and we're going to have a downward sloping demand curve. and a downward sloping demand curve as well over here. So graph A is the market for hotels in California. D1 equal to or downward sloping 
uh, demand curve equal to the marginal benefit. And then here we'll have the demand curve for uh, Airbnb, the market demand for Airbnb in California. We'll label this D2, which is equal to the marginal benefit. Let's provide a price. Let's establish price perhaps here with a quantity of demand here. And let's establish a comparable price here and here. All right. So here we have a price of P1 at point A with a quantity demanded at Q1. Here we have a price of P3 with a quantity demanded of Q3. And this will be point C. OK? Now, we saw in uh, those websites that hotels, generally speaking, are more expensive than Airbnb. So we have that heightened price of P2, which will reduce the quantity demand from Q1 to Q2. So we know in economics that according to the law of demand, as price rises, the quantity demand decreases. There's a negative relationship between these two factors, which is a movement along the demand curve from point A to point B. So hotels generally are priced at P2, let's say, with the quantity demand at Q2, but in comes a cheaper alternative, Airbnb providing a cheaper alternative. And so if hotels are more expensive, then these consumers that have reduced their quantity demand for hotels in California will switch towards a cheaper alternative. That will lead to an increase in the demand curve from D2 to D3, holding price constant at P3. So here we have D3 equal to the marginal benefit, demand increasing for Airbnb as a cheaper alternative. We're going to hold price constant at P3. And at that constant price, we see the quantity of demand increase to Q4. All right, let me uh, just make a little bit more space here. Here we have Q4, and we're measuring the quantity of demand for Airbnb. So we're moving from point C to point D. I've illustrated this before on videos where we looked at Coke and Pepsi. If Coke was to raise price, there'd be greater demand for the substitute of Pepsi. So this is a non-price determinant. Again, okay, I'm just highlighting that, that as a result of the increase in price of hotels, there's an increase in demand for uh, the cheaper alternative of Airbnb hotels. Okay, so with substitutes, again, this is just review, we see that if the price of one good rises, that causes the demand for the substitute good to increase and vice versa. If hotels were to fall, the demand for Airbnb would fall uh, because hotels provide maybe more luxury than an Airbnb unit, generally speaking. Okay, so that's the, the rule with substitutes uh, or the non-price determinant of demand for substitutes. All right, um, now let's change this a bit. Market for Airbnb, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the supply curve. And then this will relate to our next video. Where we're gonna try to understand the homelessness problem in the state of California, okay? So let's say that this is the supply curve for Airbnb, Airbnb units in the state of California. If there's an increase in demand for Airbnb over time, that would lead to the quantity of demand being greater than the quantity of supply due to that increased demand for Airbnb as the cheaper alternative. And that would cause the price of Airbnb units to rise. So perhaps if we had more data, we can see what has happened to the average price of Airbnb over time. I would assume that it has potentially gone up. So that will take us to a new point, all right? Point C, D, and let's use the same color, E. Here we have point E, 
And perhaps over time, Airbnb units are beginning to increase in price, going up from P3 to P4 as a result of that rise in demand, leading to a new equilibrium. at Q5. Okay, so I'm going to use this model in the next video to address um, the rising homelessness in California. But before we get to that video, let's go ahead and analyze this model as we would for a paper exam. As can be seen, we're illustrating a non-price determinant of demand, that being substitutes in graph A, we're illustrating the market for hotels or the market demand for hotels in California. In graph B, we're, we're illustrating the market for Airbnb in the state of California as well. We're measuring price on the y-axis, quantity on the x-axis in both models. We have three downward sloping demand curves according to law of demand labeled D1, D2, D3. They're equal to the marginal benefit. And in graph B, we have one upward sloping supply curve according to the law of supply, labeled S1, equal to the marginal cost of providing those Airbnb units into the marketplace. In graph A, we're going to uh, have a price established at P1 with a quantity demanded at Q1 at point A. And in graph B, we'll have a price initially established along D2, the price of P3 with a quantity demanded at Q3 at point C. Assuming that hotels uh, raise their price over time from P1 to P2, According to the law of demand, the quantity demanded will decrease from Q1 to Q2, which is a movement along the demand curve from point A to point B. If that happens, there could be an increase in demand for the cheaper alternative of Airbnb units. So holding price constant at P3, if hotels are more expensive relative to Airbnb, Airbnb would be the cheaper alternative, and that would lead to an increase in demand from D2 to D3, holding price constant at P3. With price constant P3 along the new demand curve of D3, the quantity demand will now be at Q4. But we will add or incorporate the supply curve in graph B. And with that supply curve, we see that at the price of P3, the quantity demanded at Q4 is greater than the quantity supply at Q3. So that means that there is excess demand for Airbnb units by vacationers, people uh, that are traveling to California on holiday. They're seeing Airbnb as a cheaper alternative. Demand is rising and that will potentially lead to its price increasing. So excess demand will lead to price increasing. So the price mechanism begins to take effect. Price rises from P3 to P4 and that will cause the quantity of demand to decrease along the D3 curve from point D to point E, or from Q4 to Q5, and that will cause the quantity supply, there'll be more property owners willing to offer their available uh, hotel, I'm sorry, their available properties on Airbnb. And so the quantity supply will increase from Q3 to Q5 until at Q5, quantity demanded equals quantity, demand, quantity supplied at point E at that price of P four okay so here we have that increase in the quantity supplied due to the higher price and that reduction in the quantity demanded due to the higher price this model graph b we're going to then transfer into the next video to illustrate why there is a shortage of affordable housing in the state of california okay if you have any questions feel free to comment those questions below and don't forget to subscribe and to like thank you so much